under a month's time, Dr. Ernest Hilaire will take up his new position as St. Lucia's ambassador in London. Uh, the new move would have ended Hilaire's four-year reign as CEO of the West Indies Cricket Board. There's no doubt that the journey has been a bittersweet one for the St. Lucian, who has uh, surely left his mark on regional cricket, whether it be for the right or wrong reasons. Well, Dr. Ernest Hilaire joins us on the line now. Um, Dr. Hilaire, thanks for being with us, um, finally. Well, thank you very much, Simon, and I think to whoever who is there with you, I'm certainly delighted to be on the program this afternoon. Good, good to have you. Um, let me just read something for you before we start. Hilaire said the players seemed devoid of the pride that drove previous successful West Indies teams. I listen to players speak and they speak of money. That all, that's all that matters to them. Instant gratification. There's no sense of investing in the future coming from them. We are producing young people in the region that we expect when they play for the West Indies to be paragons of virtue. That just won't happen. After four years in, in the job, do you, do you regret those comments? Can, can I ask you, where did you get those comments from? Um, you can, but I don't know why that matters, unless you're questioning whether you actually said these things. Well, I mean, of, of, of course I am. You, you, you have to put it in context, what was said before, during, and even after the words that you, you, you've repeated. Okay, I, I can add some more context if you like. They've not been brought up with a clear understanding of what it means and its importance, but do we blame them? Hilaire conceded that this was a sad reflection on the wider societal ills in the Caribbean. Now, Simon, that's the point, because mm -hmm. if, if you would, and if you had read the full statement, mm -hmm. you would have said that it is actually a defense of the players, that the players have found themselves in a situation where they have been criticized, they, they, they have been led to believe that representation is driven more by money. And, and, and that, 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 is, that, that is why I ask you about but the this, context. No, but I'm, I'm sorry. No, no. Can, can I, can I, no, can not I really. I'm, I'm sorry because I, I making the point. Can this, I finish? Can whatever I, can whatever I the context, you are suggesting that the players of today are only interested in money. So you are agreeing with the critics and then you may go on to defend them. But the point you make is that the players of today are only interested in money. But and I'm asking you whether you regret those comments. But again, as I'm saying to you, you if, if you read the entire statement that was made, mm -hmm. you, you would understand the context in which that was said. And, and I will say it again. Mm -hmm. we, could not, we cannot go about blaming the players for the attitudes and the dispositions that they show. The players are a reflection of our society and of the wider context in which they exist. And therefore, if when one speaks to the players, they hear the language of money, it is because of the society in which they exist. Uh, and, and that was the point that was being made. And it is a, a point which is no different to any sociological analysis of our Caribbean society, the state of our young men in Caribbean society, and, and the general socioeconomic conditions that affect young people in the region. So that's why I tell you that you, you don't just speak out two or three lines and, and you know, presented as the totality of the statement. That was, in fact, not the context in which the comments were made. But can we move on? Sure. If that being the case, then, if you are so understanding of the player's attitude and the environment that produces those attitudes, why is it Lendl Simmons had to go to arbitration to deal with issues of attitude? Why is it Ramnare Sawan had to go to arbitration to deal with attitudes? Chris Gale about his attitude. If you are that understanding of the, the attitudes that are currently um, part of the players' makeup, why is it that there was so much difficulty, it seems, in managing those attitudes? You see, because management is not a one-way street. And, and I will say to you, if we had in the region a players association, the representative of players, that approached the work in a more engaging and more constructive way, we would not have had many of the disputes that we've had. And I will say to you quite clearly, I mean, during the three years being CEO, the most difficult and the most debilitating um, time had to do with trying to, to establish a relationship that 
you know, both parties can see was, you know, taking away Nils Cricket forward. Now, I, I'm not necessarily suggesting that um, the players rep does not have a right to represent the players, but there has to be an approach and there has to be a clear determination that we can sit around a table and we can argue and fight about issues, but we have a bigger picture that we all committed to. And I think even before I became CEO, and I will put it, I will put it to you, Simon, mm -hmm. that you look at the history of West Africa before I became CEO. Yes. For just about every year before I became CEO, there was a player's strike. When I became CEO in October 2009, in that very same year, the players had taped up the sponsor's logo in Guyana, resulting in, in, in issues with the sponsor. The, there had been a boycott of a sponsor's event in Guyana. The players had boycotted the ICC World 2020 um, ticket launch in St. Lucia. The players had made themselves unavailable to play against Bangladesh. All of that before I became CEO. Right. So I walked into the CEO job with there being a very contentious environment with the players. And I can say to you, for the three years I was CEO, there was not one strike in West Indies cricket. No, but I can the... also say to you that almost, I can also say to you, almost every single international player has written to the board to say, do not deduct from their money any dues for WIPA because they do not fully appreciate the way WIPA is approaching it, it, its mandate. And uh, that has happened in the last three years. So Obviously, they, you know, I, I don't have any verification of that. What I do have, though, and given your comments about um, your time as CEO and what you seem to be doing is, is one, saying that there's an attitude problem with players that is born of the society we live in. There is a problem with Weeper's representation. Um, but yet... But can, I, can I also add? Can, no, there also is an issue. There's also an issue with WICB and how it has done its work in the past. Ah, that, that is, it's fine that for you to ICB. add that now, but I was just about to say that notwithstanding your comments, 14 times you've lost at arbitration, which is I think virtually every time you've gone to arbitration, um, it has turned out that the players were in their rights to do this, that and the other according to the arbiter that you all agreed to, to abide by or the arbit um, that you settled on. Um, it doesn't sound, Mr. Hillier, when you look at the arbitration findings that it's always been a player or weeper problem. It seems, well, on I, the face I, of it, no, that it's been a that. board problem. No, I can answer that to you very easily. First of all, there have not been 14 arbitrations. And, and, you know, it's always disappointing when media persons and, prof and very experienced media persons do not do the necessary research. There have never been 14 arbitrations that we have won. But let's put that aside because that's not the fundamental issue. Mm -hmm. the, 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 the second point comes to one which... And I read what was carried in The Guardian yesterday, where the arbitrator made statements. Now, the board can decide to appeal what the arbitrator ruling was, and there is a highly flawed ruling. But the board has decided it does not want to prolong any issue with players and any legal issues, and therefore we need to move on. So, for example, the, the arbitrator takes the player's version, never sought to get the CEO's version, Never thought to get the CEO's version. How would you get the CEO's version? Did you attend um, many of the arbitration hearings? Well, I, I was not stated to be a witness at the arbitration hearing, which probably is a fault in itself. But can I say to something? I no, but, but just to, to clear that up, that if, if they never hear from the CEO, isn't it part of the problem that the CEO is never there? Well, I don't know about never there, but I, I would admit to you that it was a fault of the process okay. that it was not, the, the, the CEO was not, was not there at the hearing. But I can also say to you, our consul was not allowed to sufficiently cross-examine Mr. Sawan. Uh, but, but again, let, let's move on. But no, no, let's, let's not, letters. sorry, Doc, let's, let's not move on because you made that comment in a release um, where you've listed that you are going to settle after the, arbit um, the arbitration has found you faulty, um, you've suggested that Sarwan was not cross-examined by our counsel. And yet, I'm reading from the final deliberations, 
It says, Mr. Sarwan testified on behalf of the claimant and Mr. Clyde Butts testified on behalf of the West Indies Cricket Board. Mr. Sarwan was attending a WICB training camp in Barbados and testified via video link. He was examined in chief by Ms. Donna Simmons, counsel for the claimant. There was no re-examination. Mr. Sarwan was also re-examined by Ms. Simmons. Mr. Butts was examined in chief by Derek Alley, the counsel for the West Indies Cricket Board, and cross-examined by Ms. Simmons. Counsel for the claimant, there was no re-examination. I asked a number of questions of Mr. Butts and Mr. Sarwan on matters requiring clarification and thereafter invited counsel to cross-examine on the answers provided by Mr. Butts and Mr. Sarwan. With their usual alacrity, both counsels asked further questions. This was in the course um, of fairness for natural justice. It seems like there was some examination by your counsel of Mr. Sawan. Well, you see, what I can tell you, though, you need to read the transcript of the proceedings. I, I have. And that's why I picked out that bit. No, no, no. That's not the transcript. That's not the transcript. Can I say to you, there were instances during the arbitration where our counsel actually said to the arbitrator that those matters are matters which can be considered for appeal if they are not dealt with. So, but again, like I said, you and I can argue about... No, but, but we, we can only argue about facts, Dr. Hillier. It says, in the, and, and I did read the entire transcript, including the awarding of monies to Mr. Sarwan. Can, can I ask you something? I read I'm it all, and, and I just pulled no, no, this no. part out to counter your claim that you said that he was not cross-examined. But I'm saying to you, Simon, what you are reading is the arbitrator's ruling. It is not the transcript of the proceedings. The transcript of the proceedings represents the, the, the word by word enactment of what took place. Mm -hmm. you, you're reading the ruling of the arbitrator, which is his words and his interpretation. And that's why I tell you, we can appeal the decision because he is saying things in his ruling which are not exactly reflected otherwise. All right. Um I notice in your statement on the arbitration matter, when I say yours, I mean the West Indies Cricket Board, it says, uh, in light of a statement reported in the media as being attributed to the West Indies Players Association relating to the Ramnara Sawan arbitration matter, the WICB deems it necessary to allow the public to benefit from the full facts. This will be the final WICB statement on the matter. The board prefers, at this critical time, um, at leading up to the world event, the T20 event, that the focus remains on the West Indies men's and women's teams and favorable appeals of the team's uh, prospects. Um, the board wishes to premise the presentation of the facts on two clear points. You recognize grounds for appeal, but you say because, because of the, oh, the prevailing conditions, you are not going to appeal and you're going to just settle this issue. D do, you, do you not respect the arbitration process. I think we've lost him for the moment. Um, we'll try and get uh, Dr. Hilaire back and uh, see if we, if we can get back to him. I think we're going to take a break and then we're going to try and get hold of him again as well. Yes, welcome back to the Sportsbook Zone. We've got Dr. Elier online. Dr. Elier, welcome back. Hi, Weber. Yes, Good. I'm back on that. Um, For the purposes of information, I'd just like to know if um, the arbitrator that, that ruled over the Ramirez Sawan issue and, of course, the Lendel Simmons issue, were that arbitrator proposed by the Western Street Board and agreed to by WIPA? Well, the, 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 the process involved both sides nominating persons that they wanted to be um, arbitrator. Um, as to which side exactly, he could have been our nominee and agreed to by WIPA, but, but what, what, what is the issue? Okay, sir, ne next thing, you started out, when you spoke to Simon to say that you, you came in in a toxic environment and you wanted to create an environment that would allow both parties, the WICV and the WIPA, to function properly. Um, I think the document that's named the MOU and the CV are the documents that governs the relationship. And those are the documents that you have breached and the arbitrator have ruled against you on 14 different occasions. What do you say about that? Well, again, we're, well, again, we're in 14 um, arbitrations. Do you know how, exactly how many arbitrations they've had? 
Well, my, my, my recollection and my history tells me that. I don't know what your collection is. I say, what do you say about because MOU? I, well, uh, may, that may be a side issue. And uh, well, if I do yes. concede today that okay. that's a side issue, then fine. What do you say about the MOU and the CBA that governs the relationship that the West Indies Cricket Board has breached on a numerous occasions? Uh, and uh, you know, the, you know the public comments I've made about the MOU CBA. It, it, it has been well documented. It has been used by WIPA as evidence in the upcoming court case, which will be heard um, in next month, as it relates to the MOU CBA. And, and those document, those comments are well recorded. And it remains my view that the, the, the major problem we face in the relationship between WIPA and WICB is the MOU CBA that the MOU CBA, and, and we have asked that the MOU CBA be um, revised to make it a more workable document. That is WICB's position. As it stands, there will always be instances where there will be issues between the two parties because of the MOU CBA. And only last week, Friday, you were at the Prime Minister's subcommittee meeting with us where the MOU CBA was discussed. And I'm sure you will inform all listeners of the position that was expressed by WIPA at that meeting, that even if the court finds that the MOU CBA should be terminated, if that is found, WIPA will call a strike and stop cricket in the region. It, it explains to you why WIPA will go to such extreme to defend and to keep the MOU CBA as it is, because it is highly in favor of WIPA, and, and it, it, it weakens the capacity of WICB to function as a governing body and to be responsible for the management of cricket in the region. Can, and, and can I, I honestly believe... Can I, sorry, Dr. Hillier, can I ask you, that um, central bargaining agreement and the MOUs, are they due to be revised anytime soon? Is there a term limit on them? Well, I mean, the, the agreement first was in effect from 2005 to 2008. Mm -hmm. WIC, WICB sought to have an, a, a renewal of the agreement in 2008. That was not agreed to by WIPA. It rolled, and WIPA claimed that it rolled over until 2011. The WICB, in early 2011, still noticed to WIPA that it wanted a revision of, of the MOU CBA, and that we also be noticed that we wanted so. And the response? also informed... And the response has been? Response well, WIPA's response then was that, and we also indicated to WIPA that because of the nature of the discussion, we wanted six months to come up with a new MOU CBA. WIPA's position then was that it only was going to allow three months of negotiations. We tried to appeal to them that this thing will take more than three months, so can we start six months? They said that would be three months. And during that, six month, we, during that six month request, would the, the existing agreements remain in place? Yes, they, they do. Yeah, they, they would okay. be in place. Um, just for, and, for, for clarity and... Can I, and can I tell you, there have been, they've been quite a lot of effort, including by external parties, to, to mediate this matter between WIPA and WICB. But I, I believe, and I understand why, WIPA does not want the agreement changed. It does not. But the agreement has to be changed because the agreement continues to be the, the sort of a lot of the difficulties that we face. All right, Dr. Hillier, for the purposes of, of the public, um, the document, the MOU and the CBA, is the Western Circuit Board signatory to that document? Is it signatory? Yes. But, but it's between the two parties, so you must be a signatory. Okay, um, and the document was negotiated and agreed upon by both parties before 2005, before it was implemented. Is that correct? Yeah, but the agreement is in effect between the two parties, so it, it, it was agreed. Certainly. So I would imagine that you would have to be functioning and operating under those agreements until it is revised or it is changed by the relevant parties. Until that date, then you will have to abide by the document. And the Western Security Board has not been doing that. What do you as a CEO for the last three years say about the arbitration that you have lost and all the money you have cost the Western Security Board over the three-year tenure? Well, I, well I, I, do not, I do know that I have cost the Western Security Board any money. If anything, I, and you know, it, it, we can always discuss what has been achieved for the last three years. And we can always discuss, you know, the whole attitude and approach to, of WIPA in the issues. WIPA, you must not deny 
that there were a number of strikes in West News cricket that virtually diminished the value of the brand of West News cricket because we broke up strikes. But, but, Mr. but Mr. Hillier, can, if, if, can, I, can I finish? Can I, no, can but I finish? you, you made this. You, you ask questions. You ask questions and you don't want to give me No, Dr. Strike. Hillier, with the greatest respect, you have, you have referred to the strikes and so on before. And I think it's fair to say that if there is to be any redress and any balance, in a relationship that hitherto might have been oppressive. There are going to be strikes and discourse and so on. So let's, let's get to where we are. Can we, if, I, I don't mean to cut you off, but you, you did mention those things before. Pers I, I don't understand your point. You say, you say there are many reasons why they have strikes. There are many reasons why they have strikes. Right. You, okay, so, so I don't exactly see the point you're making, but let, let's come back to it. Okay. So <laughs> come back to it. The then. of the... Mm -hmm. The value of West News cricket brought about by the fact that we've had so many strikes and so many actions. But the, 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 the critical thing we need to focus on is how do we move forward? Yes. How do we move forward? All right. We all agree that the MOU CBA needs to be revised. And I'm sure we will not disagree with that. <laughs> you sure? <laughs> all right. Let's say he doesn't well, we, and, and you move forward. Surely a part of moving forward is recognizing the mistakes that have been made. You, you question the 14 um, arbitration losses. Can I ask you another question then? How many cases has the West Indies board won? No, but you're missing the point I'm making to you, Simon. No, but... but I'm saying to you, Simon. No, no, please, let me, let me explain. Let me put it differently. Mm -hmm. Let me do it differently. Let, let me give you a practical example. If the MOU says, the MOU says, we must agree to the schedule of cricket in the region. It must agree. Yeah? Yes. If we decide we don't want cricket in Barbados this year, mm -hmm. and you decide, no, based on our allocation of matches, Barbados must host cricket, and WIPA says we are not going to provide our agreement, therefore there must be no cricket in the region, because we have not given our agreement to it, you then have to decide. Do I cancel all cricket until we forgive this agreement? Or do I decide to go ahead with cricket in the region because we have to have cricket in the region and WIPA will do whatever it thinks is best? Now, if WIPA then take that case um, forward and it is found that, yes, they did not give the agreement, whether you like it or not, it says they must give the agreement. So whether or not WIPA decides, for whatever reason, I am not giving you providing agreement, it can be claimed that you've breached. Right. Now, what do you do? Do you stop cricket? Are, you, are, stop you, are you citing that as, a, as an, a, a case? No, I'm, gi I'm giving you a scenario. Oh, that's, it, that's an example. But you could pick an extreme example, which would be... No, it's not extreme. No, that's no, what I'm no, asking no, you. It's is not it, extreme. Was that an actual it's case? Extreme. It's not an extreme case. All right, all right. It's not an extreme case. But the MOU, as, as you suggested, says WIPA must agree to this, that, and the other, which you have signed. Yeah. I'm asking you, and I guess it relates to the earlier question, do you not respect arbitration, documents that you have signed, agreements that you have reached? Do you not respect those things? No, of course you must respect it, Simon. But Simon, the, at the end of the day, you have a responsibility to fulfill in your role as the governing body for cricket in the region. And, and it's, all you need to have is a president and CEO that is probably not very reasonable, who is, can be spiteful, and then you have, you have chaos in, in the region. And, yeah. and when, when you have a good relationship, all goes well. Right. And if someone decides, you know what, I'm going to use this MOUCB as a weeping um, stick and, 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 and disagree and therefore cause confusion, it can be done. And it is not a conducive framework for the management of cricket in the region. I, I'm and, and moving forward. <clears throat> you, you made some blanket comments, and I, I'm just curious, is there one example you can give of the intransigence of WIPA in relation to... Uh, matters that have gone on to arbitration. Okay, can I just give you an example? Yes. People did not agree that we should play cricket in Florida. Uh -huh. They did not agree. Yes. And in their view, we should go and play the cricket somewhere else. But you did play in Florida, and I don't recall a strike, and I also recall the... No, 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 uh, no, no, but Simon, stop, 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 Simon, stop. Uh -huh. We can tomorrow decide 
We are going through the dispute resolution process because we did not agree to cricket being played in Florida, and it's a breach. But have they? No, the point is they can't. They reserve their rights. So that is have they? Because they have reserved their rights to do it. But, they have, they but, have reserved their rights to do it. But they have not. That's not a great example. I'm, I'm looking for an example. No, no, no. Simon, Simon, uh -huh. Simon, Simon. No, I'm when looking for an example. It, it's a question that I ask. Give an example of the intransigence on the part of Weeper that you have spoken about in, in a, a kind of blanket term about strikes and their attitude and so on and so on. Just, I, I just want an example. I mean, that I was an example of where they could have been and yet they weren't. So that's not the one I'm looking no, but for. I, but, no, but I said to you in the last three years, they've not been able to call a strike in the last three years. Okay. All right. I, um, we, but, I, but, but let's stick with that point. Let's stick with that point. Uh -huh. Let's stick with that point about Florida. Yes. When somebody returns you, I reserve my rights on this matter. What they're saying to you, next week if I want, I can then um, sue for breach. Or, or, they time, I can do it. or they could be seen to compromise on their right and, and not pursue what is written in the MOU. It, it's, it's, almost, it's almost an exact contradiction of what you, or how you have painted Weeper. But we've only got a few no, more... No, no, Simon, Simon. We, we've Simon, only got, Simon. I'm sorry, Doc, we've only got a few more minutes, and I want to, to get to, to some other things. Um, the reason for uh, cancelling or scrapping uh, two test matches against Sri Lanka next year, um, what's the thinking? No, but can I ask you something? You, you spent almost 20 minutes uh -huh. dealing with contentious issues with Weeper. Do you know, do you want to know about all the things they've achieved for the last three years? No, I've only asked you just one example. That's all I asked for. One no, example no, 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 of Weeper's no. intransigence. No, I'm, asked, I'm saying to you, we've spent quite a few minutes discussing. You focus on Seaman, Sawan, yes. and the uh, breach of the MOU. I'm saying, do you have any interest? in anything positive that has happened in West Indies cricket for the last two years. Well, it, Do you but, have an interest in that? But, well, did, would you want to give me a chance to... to I know your that? new job means you're going to be ambassador to London, but when I last checked, you're not hosting a talk show. I am, so I ask <laughs> questions. <laughs> um, so what about... What, ab what, ab <laughs> what about the two test matches? What's, what's the thinking behind that? No, I mean, um, Simon, I really cannot speak on those matters right now. Okay. Um, first of all, the board, the board has to consider it this weekend, and then we need to engage Weeper um, on those matters before there can be any final, um, you know, comments. Can, can I just quote from a report then? It says, the board of the West Indies and Sri Lanka have agreed to ditch both tests from the Sri Lankan tour of the Caribbean next spring. This will free up players from both teams to take part in the IPL. Is, is that the thinking? Well, I mean, put it that way. You, you, there, there are discussions going on. We, we have also informed um, WIPA that we were holding those discussions, that there have been enough issues with players and players' availability and they wanted to play in IPL. We've tried over the last few years to come up with arrangements with players where they can part represent West Indies, part go to IPL. I still believe the best scenario is for the players to go to the IPL and play. Um, I think we should encourage them to maximize their learnings from, from their skills, and if it means going to the ITL, that should, that should be allowed. However, we all know of the clashes in yeah. international cricket, and our position that they should also be available to represent West Indies. I believe that where we can have accommodations with touring teams to allow us to have all the, the, the space to, uh, for our players to go to the ITL, we should pursue those opportunities to allow the players to maximize their opportunities. That seems fair enough. All right, Dr. Elier, I see the Western Street would have yes, done sir. some good work with the women's cricket, and of course, I've gone as far as giving the ladies retainer contracts, and we can see the fruit from that, the team being a very successful team to date. But I speak to, on the men's side of it, the first class cricket is still a substandard level, and I've, I've seen a few choices by the Western Street board in 2010 to play all three games in one particular territory, trying different things. Of course, T20 has been brought to television um, and been broadcast around the world. What do you think has been the downfall in the West Indies cricket world, not being able to promote cricket better and to improve the standard of first-class cricket? Well, I, I think that there are a number of, there are a number of issues, but you, you have to separate it. The downfall, I think it, it is very clear. The standard of our first 
function has to to improve and, and part of the solution will be engaging players full time and you mentioned retainer contracts. We have to move to a stage where we can offer retainer contracts to our first class players so they can dedicate themselves more to their skill development and their own um, levels of performances. And I think when we're able to move in that direction, we will have a larger group of players that can dedicate themselves to improving um, their, their own skills. The, the nature of the competition has to be addressed to, to ensure that players play um, more cricket, that they also play in, in better facilities that could assist them in their performances. We have tried to do a few things over the last few years, including playing the regional 4-day tournaments at the test on international venues to ensure that you know the players get a better.